Okay, episode three of the Ohio Cast podcast. Sky Abuel, Coach Abuel, how you doing? Great. How about you? Oh man, having a great, fabulous night here. Uh, getting ready next month for the National Middle School Duels, and uh, you are the head coach for nine two two out of Northeast Ohio, correct? Correct. Where are you guys actually located? Where is your club nine two two? It's in Denison, Ohio. Uh, we're a little south of Canton. Okay. Hot better wrestling, right? Claymont's oh, right yeah. around there. You're not too far from Steubenville. You guys are kind of right in between like Cleveland and Columbus, probably a little closer to Cleveland, right? Uh, yeah, we do a lot of work with uh, Riggs Elite, uh, with them and Maslin. Uh, and we obviously we do a lot of work up Steubenville too. Nice. So you guys move all around and do a bunch of stuff. Where do you think, mo where, how many kids are in your club right now? Uh, right now the club's currently shut down. I'm just, uh, building around my son now, just school pool teams. What, when the club, when you have kids and you bring the team to the national middle school duels, is it a full lineup? No, oh, it's definitely a full lineup. It's a gold pool team. This lineup I got. Where do you guys draw from predominantly? Uh, I try to use Ohio kids, but, uh, Terps got a few of them. Team Ohio has got a, a pretty solid team as well. Uh, and then I try to pick up from there. When you look at a tournament like the National Middle School Duels, and we talk about how tough this tournament is, how long have you been taking your club there or some type of partial teams or whatever you're taking? How long have you been going to the National Middle School Duels? Uh, this is our second year. How did you guys do last year? Uh, I believe we got in the silver. And I don't know if we won that or not. But we're, we're, we're pretty solid last year. We got in last minute last year. Wow, and you got in a silver pool as a last minute addition. Yeah, uh, we were there was there's an invite list or whatever, a waiting list to get in, and uh, I've been messing Dom for a while trying to get our club in, but we finally got in last year. Someone dropped out, and we got in and took advantage of it. You made the top, so you effectively made the top sixteen teams out of thirty two. It's a meat grinder because they got a gold, a silver a bronze and a platinum, I want to say, is the fourth pool. So you guys got into the second pool in your set, in your first year coming, right? I'm pretty positive, yep. That's pretty good. Yeah. What do you what do you think of the level of competition? Obviously, you take your son all around. First off, what's your son's name? Niall Abiel. Niall Abiel. So, so the Abiels travel, because you were telling me about some of the tournaments you guys have already been to. Have you not made – you have made every gold pool this year so far, haven't you? So far, we plan on staying that way. Where have you guys been? Uh, we've been to Battle of the Bird. That was our first tournament. We finished fourth overall there. Uh, went to Tyrant Tussle a couple weeks later. We won that. And then went to Columbus Day last weekend and uh, finished fourth at that tournament. Where are all three of those located? Tell me the location of those three. Uh, West Virginia was one of them. Uh, Manham, PA. And the other one was, uh, I think it was only in Monroeville, so it wasn't too bad. Oh, my God. So two PAs and a West Virginia, right? Yeah. I don't know if people know, but that's the, that's the mecca of wrestling when we talk about it, like youth, high school, college, middle school, whatever. That is, if you guys want to get better, that's where you got to go. And that one in Parkersburg is actually super tough because that's nestled right just south on the Ohio River border. It's right on the Ohio border. You're in PA and... 45 minutes or something like that, if that, right? Like, yep. it's right there, and it's nestled in a really tough spot, so it draws really good from PA, Ohio, and then obviously you can get some East Coast teams in there, but it's that's a really tough tournament as well. But, man, the, was the one at Spooky Nook, the one at uh, Man in Mannheim, where is that one at? That was Spooky Nook. That was yeah. uh, Columbus State Duels last week. Oh, my gosh. You guys, you're not hiding, huh? No. Nope. We got uh... – <laughs> McDonough Dole's, I think that's in Maryland. We got Super 32 this upcoming week. Uh, uh, you know, we're going wherever the competition's at. Middle School Nationals in November. Uh, we got to get the gold pool. We got to see the good kids. I love that you guys aren't hiding from anyone. Uh, when you look at that and knowing that you got to go get the Pennsylvania guys, you got to go get the Northeast Ohio guys, you got to get against the Jersey guys. Um, and then you, if you can get into the Midwest, there's Iowa. And then there's West Coast teams coming to this, the California team. Totally different style, by the way. If you've wrestled any of the California teams, they don't like the contact as much. They wrestle really good from a distance. 
They're slick. There's not as much banging and pulling. Obviously, the PA guys are really good on top. Jersey guys, just tough all around. But what's the biggest thing you want your kids to get out of a, you know, you go to all these national events, but national middle school, those, what's the biggest thing you want your kids to get out of it? We got to lose. You got, you got to lose. You got, you learn from losing. So you got to wrestle the best. And once you, you lose, you see where you're at. You keep climbing the ladder. That's uh, now I wrestled a kid last year. Kid pinned him and wrestled him this past week. Beat him eight to two. We see him at super 32 this week. Hopefully we cut the deficit or beat him. And that's the goal. That is like a very Guy Seiko thing of you to say, because Guy Seiko is all about getting this kid really good competition. Um, and I, you know, obviously I deal with Guy Seiko a lot. I deal with the Burnettes a lot. They always put their kids in adverse situations. Do you think like do you do the same thing to your son? Absolutely. I put him in the most hardest situations uh, where he's uncomfortable uh, just so he fights through it. What he Like at the beginning when he was young, he hated going to other clubs and uh, he fought through it and it made him stronger. Now he's, Want to wrestle the best and compete at a high level. OAC events. You know, we, I work with OAC a lot. Um, how has he finished in the OAC events? Uh, he got fifth last year. Uh, who was it? Uh, no, Chris beat him in the sem- semis, I think. And yeah. then he lost to Garrison Wisner to get in for third and fourth. So I, we, my nephew, I coached my nephew at the, uh, OEC junior high state championships. It was when it was in Steubenville. I don't know if you were around then and like if you were big into wrestling in 2007, if you were coaching yet or what you were doing. I don't know if you were in the Navy or what you were doing, where you were in two, maybe it was 2006. Yeah, it was 2006. It was at, they used to have this old like indoor football arena in Steubenville. Do you, do you remember that arena? Yeah. It's no Smith, longer was there. Smitty involved at all with that? What's that? Was Smitty involved at all with that? You know what? I don't know the answer to that, actually. I know that it was a one-year thing for the OAC State Championships was in Steubenville one year. So the reason I bring it up is my nephew was a seventh grader, and he lost to some guy who never panned out or whatever in the semifinals, and then he lost again, and he ended up taking fifth place as a seventh grader. So I remember that. I was like, but my point is the OAC is a a meat grinder of a tournament, and then his eighth grade year, he beat one of the Skenesny brothers in the uh, finals of it. So it was always like just a really fun tournament. You know, obviously the OAC is a top notch tournament. And I think that's where you guys are trying to peak though. At the end of the year, you want him to win the OAC. There's no yep. question. That's, that's, that's the a place where you don't want losing. Nope. Is this yeah, all Jared does, practice uh, for that? Yeah. Jared does a great job with the OACs. I mean, he, he does an outstanding job. He has for years running that tournament, him and uh, Jude, uh, you know, yeah, the goal was to get to the top. Uh, He'll have some tough kids in his weight class this year. I know Kane Schwager, uh, he's coming back. He was a returning state champ in the weight. Uh, we haven't wrestled him yet, but uh, he's a good kid, comes from a good family. So hopefully we get that match. Biggest thing that you want whenever you see your son, he's going to be in high school next year. First off, where does he go into high school? Uh, right now he's at Indian Valley. Uh, I'm kind of looking for a coaching gig next year. So uh, I turned a couple of jobs down this year. So uh, – I guess it kind of depends on that, where the dominoes fall. So you don't know yet. That's not something where you can really answer yet. Yeah. Okay. Could be Maslin Perry. Could be anywhere, effectively, in that area. Steubenville, could he be Big Red? He could be anything, right? Uh, Steubenville wouldn't be a bad option. That school is really nice, actually. Steubenville's got, like, a really nice school right on the river. It's actually a really cool spot. Brody Sakach, we've wrestled with him a lot. Yeah. He's How much bigger is Brody than you, than you guys? Uh, he's a lot bigger now. Uh, yeah. But they used to be close in size. Okay. So still figuring it out, but you guys live in Denison. So do you technically live in the Claymont district then? Yeah. Because you were, you were a pinstriper, right? Oh, I was nine to, I was diehard Claymont until last year. And then, uh, yeah, you know, things went south. Okay. So just real quick, did you used to wear the pinstripe singlet and crossface cradle everybody? Oh, you better believe it. That was the Eric <laughs> token and way. Eric token and way. Okay. So I wrestled a guy at Medina one year, and I was a freshman. I want to say his name was Armstrong. And he beat me within an inch of my life. Ryan? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And I was just a freshman. And then and then he wrestled one of my teammates for fifth and sixth at state that year. And my teammate did the felonious assault exact opposite to him then. 
Oh, nice. I was all right with it. I was like, okay, I'll accept it. But that guy could cross face cradle on me. And then when I read Russell, those guys who were just always really tough, man. And the Tokenins did a great job and the Peterses and they got a, just a really good tradition there at Claymont. And, but the pinstripers always brought it, man. You were, were you 90, 98, 99? Which year were you? 99. So we were the, we were the last team to beat Graham in the duel. From were Claymont. you? Yeah. So is Tokenin, the Tokenin son that was like a state finalist, is he your grade or you're younger? That was my drill partner. Yeah, we were 99ers together. 99, yeah. He took second his sophomore year. I took third my sophomore year. He was massive at 103. Oh, he was big. He was, yeah. He's the biggest 103 I think I've ever seen. Yep. What was his name? I forget. Kane. Yeah, he was really good. And then, um, I don't know if you know this little trivia for you. You know Travis Crabtree? No, so I don't know if I should claim to. Okay. Or... <laughs> yeah, he's a good dude. So, Travis... Obviously, he's at Perkins. Okay. This is a great story. Okay. Because he's a 9-2 tour. He's a gravel roader. He's a car brand. Want to take you out and beat you up on the gravel road. Okay. So he hated St. Mary's forever. Forever. Okay. And I remember like I'd see him when I'd be like, right when he got the job, ah, I can't stand St. Mary's. I hate him. Well, then I figured, they, I figured out why he's like cool with them now. Do you, do you know why, how he's cool with them now? I heard Jared and him got together because I know they're big on the OAC and stuff together. So. Okay. Do you know Dawn? Yeah. Dawn, Dawn yeah. She was uh, my, one of my best friends. So Dawn is married to Drew Opfer. Drew, yeah. That's that's Travis's cousin. Dawn's brother was right. a state champ for Claymont, right? Yeah, Ryan was. Ryan. Dude, the guy still looks 25 years old, by the way. I saw a picture of that guy. What's, oh. his, last, is it, what's his last name? McDaniel. McD the, so Dawn McDaniel. Is married yeah, Drew. to Drew Opfer. Yep. So there you Small go. World. Crabtree had no choice. He had to drop the grudge. He had to let the no Hatfield McCoy stuff in Sandusky. He's <laughs> all good. He loves those guys now. And it was like the best thing because he's just such a rough and tumble, gritty dude. He tells you what's on his mind all the time. What year was Crabtree? Like 93? High yeah, school? he was yeah, he was he was older than me. Well older. Uh, I would say probably 93, somewhere in that area. One's McDaniel. McDaniel, 92? Yeah, they won a state title his senior year in 92. Yeah, because they won, and then Clyde won maybe. Clyde won the year before them. Then they won the next year. Clyde won a couple years after. And that's when you could win with – Clyde won the one year in 95 with four guys. What did you guys win with when you were like a middle schooler? You were probably a middle schooler when they won, right? Yeah, I think they had uh... – Ryan McDaniel, Scotty Shaw, or Craig Shaw, Scott McDaniel, and Kurt Henry. I think they had like four, four or five placers. You just can't do that anymore. You're not, you're not in the top five anymore with that. Do you realize that? That's uh, that's crazy. That is wild. Now, whenever you look, eventually, when you go to it, like Division Three is obviously the the district or the the division that's going to have the most parity, and you can have an upstart team, and you can win D three. You know, Legacy Christian's done a really good job. Um, D2, obviously, Graham, you guys know that, you know, you're a Claymont guy. You know what the deal is with Graham. They've won every state title since 01, I want to say. Yeah, they're yeah, oh, oh, 2000, I think, is the last year they didn't win. Oh, my gosh, that's insane. And then they won in 98 when I was a senior. Um, and then D1, obviously, you see all these teams that chase and nip at St. Edwards. Is that something yeah. where you look at, like, man, if I can get a job in D3, D, you know, like, do you look at that type of stuff when you're thinking about where you're going to be next year? Uh, that's, you know, it's, I, I kind of look at like, what, what do they got coming back? What do we got for drill partners? Uh, what's the organization like? Uh, yeah, those kind of things. Yeah. Drill partners are huge. Uh, what's already there, you know, uh, do they got a nice, nice youth program, you know, coming in. Uh, but those are the things I'm looking at. Uh, gotcha. Uh, Dom D'Amelio and dealing with Dom and them getting you in last year. What does that do for you guys in your relationship with Dom D'Amelio and Genoa wrestling? Oh, uh, that's, I mean, that's great. Uh, yeah. I, I never knew Dom until, uh, uh, last year. I didn't really know him. I knew his son wrestled for Ohio state. So I did follow him. Uh, but yeah, it, it's awesome. When I met you last year, the defense soap duels at Spire, I thought I was going to be meeting some like grateful dad dude who was going to roll up in a van. Your name's Sky. 
right? Yeah, I don't know. And this is a guy named Zebulon. This is a guy named Zebulon. <laughs> Where is Sky a nickname, a middle name? What is Sky? I know it's your first name that we call you by, but tell me the story of the name Sky. It's my middle name. Uh, my dad's name was Kelly. So my mom named me Kelly. And then my dad married a Kelly. So whenever the people would call, you know, I just went by my middle name. And my mom always liked the name Sky. So kind of stuck by it and always used it. I didn't think I'd be talking to a Denison Navy vet named Sky ever in my life. I'm not going to lie to you. Like a gritty blue collar dude. Them. I didn't think I'd, I don't know a lot of gritty blue collar dudes named Sky. I'm just going to put it out there. There's not very many of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the uh, the biggest thing with your club moving forward? What are you guys going to focus on? I know you're focusing on your son, but what do you want to focus on with 922 and where does it go from here? Uh, I'm probably going to pass the torch, the torch next year. I'm definitely going to keep the club, but I'm uh, definitely probably going to pass the uh, name to someone else that's got kids younger in the junior high or whatever so they can get in these good tournaments and stuff like that, invite it back and all that stuff. I'll help with building teams and stuff like that for them. Most likely wherever uh, we end up at is where we'll have a feeder for the 922, and that's where we'll be getting these tournaments, these, those reps in for those kids. I love it. Now, we do promote event, right? I like to promote this event. I've, I started with this event. Um, I got down into the flow wrestling deal, which I don't work with them anymore, but that was originally how the event got big and started to blow up. They got flow, on flow wrestling. Um, but the event, Last year was very different than the event's going to be this year in the sense that they renovated that hall, which used to be the Seagate Center, now it's the Glass City Center. Um, but the hotels are open now. Nice. Are you a person who will never leave the venue as soon as you check in Friday night and you leave Sunday? Will you ever leave the venue with the restaurants, bars, and hotels and the wrestling all right there? Or will you just stay in the venue? Uh, I guess I have to see what's all around there and uh see what my son wants to do with them if he wants to go out and see a movie or uh, i know that halloween comes out soon so i don't know if that's something during that time that we could go watch or i don't know we'll definitely probably venture out i i don't drink or anything like that anymore so i definitely probably won't be hanging on the bars or anything like that but we'll definitely uh probably go out and get food or something like that find something to do this past weekend we went to spooky nuke the little uh they had like four haunted houses and a trail and it was pretty cool. I took one of the other kids with us and we had a good time. Okay. So if there's advice you could give youth wrestling parents, like <laughs> me, what would you say to me? I got a six and a four-year-old. Uh, what would you say to someone like me whose kids are just getting into it? And, um, you know, I want my kids to do it lifelong, hopefully, and obviously be involved with it lifelong, do it as long as they physically can. What would your advice be to someone like me? Don't be afraid to throw them in, throw them to the storm. Don't be afraid to throw them to the wolves. Uh, you know, uh, competition's huge, even at that age. You know, my son was wrestling uh, Leroy Stiegel and Quake Beatty, you know, some older kids, and, you know, they put whippings on him in the room. You know, he didn't want to come back sometimes. And then, you know, eventually he started catching up a little bit and realized that he can score and he made adjustments. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And just keep grinding away. That's all you can do. I think that kids that will stick with it and the, putting them in the training situations you're putting them in, they only really got an option, you know, obviously quitting or you get better. I mean, you're yes. either going to quit or you're going to get better. It's one or the other. You're going to get real tough too. I know that like physically like uh, can take interrogations from the meanest people on the planet. Tough. I know that. You know, it, this area is full of scrappers too. I mean, there's a lot of scrappy kids, uh, uh, football and, uh, wrestling i mean there, there's a lot of tough kids in this area it's listen it's a gritty spot of, of, of ohio northeast ohio definitely a gritty a gritty spot hey the garbrants are from there um are they from denison or Yurksville? denison then so they're from where you're from um do you see those guys ever uh i see zach every once in a while cody i haven't seen in a while he come to our room uh, a few years back but uh, I haven't seen too much of him anymore. He did uh, buy us a mat for our room, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't see him as much as I used to. Okay. Because I know Zach was working for Mike Tyson. Yeah, how about that? 
He was working. <laughs> no, yeah, he was working for Mike Tyson, running all of his uh, CBD stuff for him. Yeah. And then um, I know that Cody is still fighting. I don't see that he's retired yet, um, but I know that he raises pit bulls. Yeah, yeah. he's a prize he breeder. I know that of, of pit bulls. Yeah. Yep. Do you know I coached those guys? They came on a team. We picked them up on a team at Oak Harbor, a Lake Erie team, and we went out to the schoolboy duels in Iowa, the AAU schoolboy duels. And my nephew Ian was on the team. Keith Witt, we had a really good team. And uh, that's how I met those boys. They were little. They were little itty bitty guys, fourth, fifth graders, because they're a year apart in school, I think. So, so Ian's related to you? Ian's, Ian's my Miller. nephew. Ian's my nephew. Well, he yeah. To, he went to Kent State, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he was the one I was play. coaching. I was coaching him at Steubenville when he took fifth place. Oh, nice. Yeah, he lost a semifinal match. He took fifth in the OEC as a seventh grader. So um, yeah, he's at Appalachian State now with my other nephew, Wyatt. I got a picture of my other nephew Wyatt over my shoulder after he won a state title right there. He gave me yeah. a, a big old hug after he won a state title in 2021. And uh when they had to have him in the high school gyms and Marion is where his was, where D3 was. But yeah, man, we, we, uh, I, I'd go way back with those guys from where you're from, obviously Crabtree and the guys who were claim out guys. And then the Armstrong guy committed a felony against me. <laughs> Hopefully you don't, Hopefully you don't come up and cross face cradle me and strap me up. I'd hate that. Uh, it's just Crabtree. He's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I he love was on it. the South side of Denison. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Cody Garbrandt told me a story that he was going to be a coal miner. Is that, are there a lot of coal miners down there? I think he did something with, uh, that him and Zach both. Zach and know, but... both were going to be coal miners. Is that, how far away would you have to do coal mine? Like how far would you travel for that? Like cat is like, where do you go? Yeah. Uh, that I'm not sure. I've never got into that stuff. I, I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to you. I love energy and being heated and I love power. I'm not, because that's where most of it, coal fire is a big part of it. I just don't think I could be a coal miner. Not good neither. There's no way. You got to be gritty, man. You guys are just different down there. I love it. I love it, Sky. I appreciate it. Uh, you got anything else for me? Anything else you want people to know in the country about 922 and what you guys are doing down there? National middle school duels, events, where you guys are, your son, what's going on, anything like that? Uh, we will be at Defense Oak Duels as well. Uh, will you be there again? Uh, I don't think they'll let me not be there. I was going to say, yeah. I was gonna... Yeah, guy, I already just talked to him. He's like, oh, yeah, we're doing it. Cause I, I, uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I, whenever we can get a higher level of um, production, filming, and not just me, you know, it's like I just take a bunch of phones. All I do is I take a bunch of phones. I set up phones on the mat, and then I got hard drive cameras. I got hard drive cameras and I set these on the mat. It's either this or a phone. And I don't really do much live because it's hard to get the internet and all this other stuff. Whenever you're in these arenas and planning logistics is hard. I like to see if we can get track wrestling and flow wrestling. Cause then that takes a lot of pressure off me. Cause that's what Dom and the national middle school do. I don't have to deal and run around doing any production because my productions quite honestly, it's like, uh, it's amateur. You know what I mean? I'm filming on iPhones um and just one guy you know what i mean like a one-man show but we can you know that's either hard drive cameras or, or uh, sd card cameras i'd rather see a higher level of production and have an outside company come in i think rudis is going to get more and more into that i'd really like to support them um i like to support uh any different production if i can does that make sense to you absolutely i got tommy's boy wrestling with the set uh middle school national rules yeah so tommy don't have to worry about me Hey, Zeb, where's the link for this? Because he'll, he'll text me. You know, he's he's a good dude. But they know that they can just go watch everything on Flow Wrestling. There's a schedule. There's mats. It's all. And I, I would rather deal with a professional production team. But when Guy tells me to do something, I do it because Guy takes care of me, treats me with respect, and is always, whatever I need, Guy's always so supportive. And obviously, I actually went and picked this up last week. Um, two weeks ago, I went and he took care of me with a bunch of product. and. Whatever a guy says, I try and accommodate it. Um, but, yeah, I think we tried flow wrestling a couple of years, and he wasn't happy with it maybe. So he was like, no, we'll just stick with you. So I will be at Defensive Duels to answer your question. I'm glad you asked because we are going to be there doing it. and Just a lot on throw, me. Uh, I need to throw guys some love because he uh, 
I forget, maybe two or three years ago. Yeah. Hey. He got us a defense soap basket for our team because we're doing a raffle for fundraising for Virginia Beach. And uh, he donated a lot of stuff to us. So I definitely got to show that. Love. There's, a not a more, there's not a more generous guy in the sport of wrestling than Guy Seiko. And I mean, it's a, I'm straight up from the bottom of my heart. Um, he's taking care of me and my family, my family and I, and always is it's never a no everything's always like what do you need and i just i appreciate that so i wouldn't be in this right now if it wasn't for guy's sake oh i would just be teaching high school which is fine and being dad which is even better but like um you know guys like that keep me in the sport the burnett brothers keep me in the sport that's why i'm loyal to those guys so you know this is man this sport's a relationship sport it's you know your guy schmitty i talk to your guy schmitty i go hey tell me some more about you know just calling to talk talk sky with him and he loves you he's got nothing but great things to say about you and that's that's just how the sport is right you know if you're bad or you're not a good guy people know about you pretty quick don't they correct i mean someone's a scumbag or they're this they're that they're only doing it for this reason or that reason it's exposed pretty quick in this sport wouldn't you agree yeah absolutely yeah sky man i appreciate you you got anything else for me uh no we're ready to rock uh getting ready for super 32 this weekend and uh hopefully things go well from there and we'll just keep building all right we will see you in early november in toledo ohio at the national middle school duels at the formerly the arena formerly known as the seagate center now the glass city center sky thank you for the time stick around all right all right thanks up